हेलो एवरीबॉडी माय सेल्फ शैलेंद्र कुमार एसोसिएशन प्रोफेसर जगन्नाथ यूनिवर्सिटी जयपुर राजस्थान टुडे आई एम गोइंग टू डिस्कस ऑन द टॉपिक हिस्ट्री ऑफ फोटोग्राफी एंड सिनेमेटोग्राफी फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल यू शुड नो व्हाट इज फोटोग्राफी फोटोग्राफी लिटरली मींस ड्राइंग विद लाइट एज यू कैन मेक आउट द वर्ड फोटोग्राफी इज मेड ऑफ टू वर्ड्स वेयर एज फोटो मींस लाइट ग्राफी स्टैंड फॉर ग्राफिक which means drawing so once man learned to copy an image with the help of a camera the process started being called photography photography is a combination of subjective thought creative imagination visual design technical skills and practical organizing ability is this instant it is thought of as evidence identification a kind of diagram of a happening the camera is your visual notebook to make a picture first of all a chemically prepared surface is needed which is generally a uniform coating over glass cellulite or paper photography is combination of physics chemistry and creative art since it is a creative medium man behind the camera always plays main role if some camera if same camera same film or memory chip and same subject is given to 10 different persons the result will vary from person to person depending upon his angle exposure mood composition etc and camera never lies since it records and reproduces truly whatever sees through the lens therefore before clicking the shot one has to be extremely careful photography has to do with light forming an image normally by means of a lens the image is then permanently recorded either by chemical means using film liquid chemicals and dark room processes digital means using an electronic sensor data storage and processing and print out with the help of computer as digital methods have become readily accessible cheaper and more ecologically sound photographers readily combine the two shooting on film and then transferring result into digital form of retouching and print out in many cases now such as news photography some for simple quickness of use the digital route is taken now the history of photography in the world 1826 first permanent image french inventor joseph nisphon nipfes uses a camera obscura to burn a permanent image of the countryside as his lee grass france state onto a chemical coated pewter plate he names his technique heliography meaning sun drawing the black and white exposure takes 8 hours and fades significantly but an image is still visible on the plate today centuries of advances in chemistry and optics including the invention of the camera obscura set the stage for the world's first photograph the face produced his photo a view of a courtyard and outbuilding seen from the houses of stairs window by exposing a bitumen coated plate in a camera obscura for several hours on his window sill the first photo of a person is clicked in 1939 in early 1939 french painter and chemist louis jacques mande De Gure photographs a Paris street scene from his apartment window.
first photo of a person in early 1839 french peter and chemist louis jacques mande de guru photographs a paris street scene from his apartment window using a camera obscura and his newly invented daguerreotope type process this long exposure time several minutes means moving objects like pedestrians and carriages don't appear in the photo but an unidentified man who stops who stops for a shoe shine remains still long enough to unwittingly become the first person ever photographed in 1847 first photo of lightning in 1847 early photography pioneer thomas isterly makes a photograph of a bolt of lightning the first picture to capture the natural phenomenon first photo of lightning in 1847 first photo of war in 1847 during the mexican american war charles j betts follows the american army to veracruz mexico and according to an advertisement offers to photograph the dead and wounded dozens of ano anonymous daguerreo types are also taken of troop movements and american officers the first official war photos so are of the Crimean War from 1855 to 1856. The British government sends several photographs to document to document the war, but because of his meticulous preparations, Roger Fenton, a British solitaire turned noted photographer, is the only one to get a good results. He and his assistant take some 350 images, mainly portraits. 1858 first birds i view felix tanakan better known by the nom de plum nadar combines his interest aeronautics journal, journalism and photography and become the first to capture an aerial photograph in a tethered balloon over paris in 1858 1861 first color photo the enormously influential scottish physicist james clerk maxwell creates a color image onto a single screen three black and white images each pass through three filters green red and blue his photo of a multicolor ribbon is the first to prove prove the efficacy of the three color method until then just a theory and set of the stage for further color innovation particularly by the lumiere brothers in france 1878 first action photo california photographer edward may bridge using new emulsions that allow nearly instant instantaneous photography begins taking photograph sequences that capture animals and humans in motion his 1878 photo series of a toting horse created with 12 cameras each outfitted with a trip wire helps settled a disagreement over whether all four of a horse's hooves leaves the ground during a trot it also causes a popular stir about the potential of cameras to study movement may bridge goes on the on to create hundreds of image sequences with humans and animals as 
as subjects. These photo series are linked to the earliest beginnings of cinematography. 1884 first tornado photo taken by an unknown photographer this image is thought to be the oldest existing photo of a tornado according to the u.s national weather service it was taken on august 28 1884 about 20 miles southwest of howard south dakota 1889 first photo published in National Geographic the first photograph to appear in National Geographic is a relief relief map of North America it appeared in the magazine's third issue volume 1 November 3rd 1889 the first photograph of a natural scene generally considered the first real photograph in the magazine is of Harald Island in the Arctic Ocean taken from a ship and appearing in the March 1890 issue. First National Geographic Photo Series National Geographic magazine publishes its first stand-alone photographic series in 1905. The piece, a photographic tour of Lhasa, Tibet, runs in the January 1905 issue and fills 11 pages. Magazine editor Gilbert H. Grossvener is congratulated by National Geographic Society members but reveals later that he expected the pictorial to get him fired. 1906, the first National Geographic wildlife photo. National Geographic begins its long celebrated association with wildlife photography with its July 1906 issue. In a feature titled Photographic Wild Game with flashlight and camera, the magazine publishes some 70 wildlife photographs by using rep George Shiraz, many taken at night using flash powder. The decision to publish the pictorial causes two broad members, board members, to resign, protesting that wandering of into nature is not geographic, but editor Gilbert H. Grosvenor later described the piece as an extraordinary educative series. Nobody had ever seen pictures like that of wild animals. First photos of the North Pole on the July on the April 6, 1909. Robert E. Pearley and his assistant Matthew Hansen become the first people to reach and photograph the North Pole. The mission, supported by the National Geographic Society, by a grueling 37-day dog sled journey over 475 miles of ice. The feat is immediately questioned by skeptics who say purely navigation and reckoning were dotted and that the round trip could not have been completed so quickly. First photo of Maku Picchu from 1912 to 1950. The National Geographic Society support expenditure by Yale University professor and explorer Hiram Bingham to excavate the ancient Insa city of Machu Picchu in the Peruvian address. Bingham's photo in National Geographic are among the first ever published 
by the mysterious Inca citadel. First natural color photo in National Geographic. The July 1914 issue of National Geographic magazine features its first autochrome or natural color photograph, a flower garden in Belgium. The magazine had used hand colored images since November 1910. In April 96, 1916, National Geographic becomes one of the first American publication to run a series of autochrome color photographs. In 1926, first underwater color photo. Longley and National Geographic staff photographer Charles Martin used an autochrome camera and a raft full of explosive magnesium flash powder to eliminate the shallows of Florida's dry tortugas and make the first undersea color photographs. The photos which show reef scenes with fish are published in the January 1927 National Geographic. 1935 First High Altitude Photo National Geographic teams up with the U.S. Army Air Corps for the record-breaking flight of Explorer II, a helium balloon with a hermetically sealed magnesium alloy gondola. The balloon takes off near Rapid City, South Dakota and ascend 72397 feet into the stratosphere, a world altitude record for a manned flight. Captain Albert Stevens takes the first photograph showing the curve of the earth and first curve photograph taken from the stratosphere. 1940s first high-speed photography image by Harold Dock Edgerton, a professor of electrical engineering at the Institute of Technology, works with National Geographic to perfect high-speed stroboscopic photography, freezing on film the rapid movements of nature and elude the eye. National Geographic publishes several of the images, including bullets frozen in the mid-flight and still humming words wing, nicknamed Papa Flash. Edgerton's techniques are later used in to illuminate the ocean's deepest abscess. In 1943, the first photo on National Geographic cover. For its July 1943 issue, National Geographic spruces up its normally static yellow and white cover with a photo of a Belowing American flag. The decision was made after a wartime plea by the U.S. Department for all major magazines to print a flag on their June or July covers, hoping to encourage the purchase of war bonds. 1946 First photo taken from space. Researchers with, with the Johns Hopkins University Applied Physics Laboratory strap a 35mm camera to a German V-2 missile and launch it into space from White Sand Missile Range in New Mexico. The camera snaps a picture every second and a half as the rocket ascends to 65 miles above the surface. The camera falls back to earth and slam into the ground but the film contained in a steel cassette is unharmed. 
the developed photos are the first ever to show earth from space a grainy black and white wedge of planet framed against the black expense hundred of newspaper magazines run the photos 1949 to 56 first survey of the night sky national geographic team teams up with the california institute of technology for the palomar observatory sky survey a seven year project to produce the first photographic map of the northern hemisphere's night sky the work is done at the palomar observatory in california using big skinnet a new 48 inches camera telescope the result is a comprehensive study of the heavens that leads to the discovery of many new stars and galaxies and is still used by astronomers today 1960s ocean eye invented frustrated by the inability to shoot wide range photos using currently available underwater housings national geographic photographer builds little hills works with the national geographic photo lab and the photogrammetry corporation to design a better model the result essentially a transparent plexiglass bubble with a set of handles and controls revolutionary revolutionary nice underwater photography dubbed ocean eye the new housing can accommodate a camera with a bulky motor driving as well as a wide range of lenses and its near perfect optics allow the photographers to take wide shots as well as close up without the light distortion caused by water nineteen sixty two first all color after decades of pioneering color photography technology national geography magazine introduced a new era in february nineteen sixty two becoming the first major american periodical to print an all color issue the magazine goes on the publish more color in its editorial pages throughout 1962 than any other major magazine in the country 1985 national geographic cover features afghan girl national geographic june 8 1985 cover features staff photographer steve macre photograph photo of a young afghan girl discovery of the sunken titanic national geographic staff photographer imori christ of the company's oceanographer robert bellard on a mission to discover the wreckage of the titanic using sonar and unmanned submersibles ballard and kristoff search for weeks and finally find the wreck under more than 12000 feet of water in a sea canyon near the grand's bank of new founded land national geographic publishes a major package of the discovery in its december 1985 issue it is the first in a cascade of related articles and television programs on the titanic 1991 the first digital still camera kodak releases the first commercially available professional digital camera in 1991 this device extremely expensive and marketed to professional photographers uses a nikon f3 camera body filled fitted with a digital sensor over the next 5 years several companies 
come out with more affordable models and today the market is overwhelmed with thousands of digital still camera models. First digital camera trip National Geographic photographers had been using camera traps to take pictures of wildlife for years. But in 2006, George Sinmens becomes the first to do so using a digital setup. The shoot meticulously arranged at a watering hole in the Sonoran Desert involves wired and wireless stops, a digital SLR camera and an infrared. The query, a close-up of the elusive North American mountain lion, mountain lions and various other animals being showing up quickly but it takes weeks to get just the right shot. A crouching young mountain lion at water's edge. Now, Introduction to Cinematography Cinematography is an illusion of movement by the recording and subsequent rapid projection of many still photographic pictures on a screen. Originally a product of 19th century scientific interior, cinema has become a medium of mass entertainment and communication and today is a multi-billion pound industry. No one person invented cinema. However, in 1891, the Edison company successfully demonstrated a prototype of the kinetoscope which enabled one person at a time to view moving pictures. The first public kinetoscope demonstration took place in 1893. By 1894, the kinetoscope was a commercial success with public parlors established around the world. The first to present projected moving pictures to a paying audience were the Lumiere brothers in December 1895 in Paris, France. They used a device of their own making the cinematograph which was a camera, a projector and a film printer all in one. At first, at first films were very short, sometimes only a few minutes or less. They were shown at fairgrounds, music halls or anywhere a screen could be set up and a room darkened. Subjects in, included local scenes and activities, views of foreign hand, lands, short comedies and news worthy events. The film were accompanied by lectures, music, and a lot of audience participation. Although they did not have synchronized dialogues, they were not silent as they are sometimes described. By 1914, several national film industries were established at this time, Europe, Russia, and Scandinavia were the dominant industries, America was much less important. Big films became longer and storytelling or narrative became a dominant form. As more people paid to see movies, the industry which grew around them was prepared to invest more money in their production distribution and exhibition. So large studios were established and dedicated cinemas built. The First World War greatly affected the film industry in Europe and the American industry grew in relative importance. The first 30 years of cinema were characterized by the growth and consolidation of an industrial base, the establishment of the narrative form and the refinement of technology. Color was first added to black and white movies through hands coloring, tinting, toning and stenciling by 1906. The principles of color separation were used to produce 
so called natural color moving images with the british cinema color process first presented to the public in 1909 cinema color was primarily used for documentary films such as the epic with our king and queen through india also known as the delhi darbar of 1912 which run for over 2 hours in total the early technical processes from 1915 onwards were cumbersome and expensive the color was not used more widely until the introduction of its three color processes in 1932 it was used for films such as gone with the wind and wizard of ojo in hollywood and a matter of life and death in the uk the first attempt to add sound to project pictures used phonograph graphic cylinders or disc the first feature length movie incorporating dialogues the jazz singer used the warner brother with a phone system which employed a separate record disc with each reel of film for the sound this system proved unreliable and was soon replaced by an optical variable density soundtrack recorded photographically along with the edge of the film developed originally for news reels such as movie tone by the early 1930s nearly all feature length movies were presented with sound and by the mid 1930s some were in full color too the advent of sound secured the dominant role of the american industry and gave rise to the so called golden age of hollywood during the 1930 and 40s cinema was the principal form of popular entertainment with people often attending cinema twice a week ornate super cinemas or picture palaces offering extra facilities such as cafes and ballrooms came towards and cities many of them could hold over 3000 people in a single auditorium in britain the highest attendance occurred in 1946 with over 30 million visits to the cinema each week thoms edison used performed 35 mm film in the kinescope and in 1909 this was adopted as the worldwide industry standard the picture had a wide width to height relationship known as the aspect ratio of 4h into 3 or 1 by 33 when the first number refers to the width of of the screen and second height so for example for every 4 cm in width there will be 3 in height with the advent of optical sound the aspect ratio was adjusted to 1.37 to 1 this is known as the academy ratio as it was officially approved by the academy of motion pictures picture art and sciences in 1932 although there were many experiments with other formats there were no major changes in screen ratios until the 1950s the introduction of television in america promoted a number of technical experiment designed to maintain public interest in cinema in 1952 the cinema processes using three projectors and a wide deeply curved screen together with multi track surround sound was premiered it had a very large aspect ratio of 2.59 to 1 giving audience a greater sense of 
immersion and proved extremely popular. However, Cinerama was technically complex and therefore expensive to produce and show. Wide-skin cinema was not widely adopted by the industry until the invention of Cinemascope in 1953 and Todd AO in 1955. Both processes used single projectors in their presentation. Cinemascope squeezed images on 35 mm film when projected. They were extended laterally by the projector lens to fit the screen. To add, AO used film with a width of 70 mm. By the end of the 1950s, these innovations had effectively changed the shape of the cinema screen with expect ratio of either 2.35 to 1 or 1.66 is to 1 becoming standard. Stereo sound which had been experimented with in the 1940s also became part of the new widescreen experience. Specialist large skin system using 70 mm film were also developed. The most successful of these had been IMAX which as of 2020 has over 100, 1500 screens around the world. For many years IMAX cinemas have shown films especially made in its unique 2D or 3D formats but more recently they have shown popular mainstream feature films which have been digitally remastered in the IMAX format often with additional skin or 3D effects. While cinemas had some success in fighting the competition of television they never regained the position and influence they held in the 1930s and 40s and over the next 30 years audience divine led by 1984 cinema attendance in britain had declined to 1 million a week by the late 2000 however that number has doubled the first British multiplex was built in Miltron Kinis in 1985, sparking a boom in out-of-town multiplex cinemas. Today, most often see films on television, whether terrestrial, satellite or subscription videos on demand, services, streaming films, content on computers, tablets and mobile phones is becoming more common as it provides to be more convenient for modern audiences and lifestyles. I thought America still appears to be the most influential film industry. The reality is more complex. Many films are produced internationally, either made in various countries or financed by multinational companies that have interest across a range of media. In the past, 20 years film production has been profoundly altered by the impact of rapidly improving digital technology. Most mainstream production are now shot on digital formats with subsequent processes such as editing and special effects undertaken on computers. Cinemas have invested in digital projection facilities capable of producing screen images that rival the sharpness, detail and brightness of traditional film projection. Only a small number of more specialist cinemas have retained film projection equipment. In the past few years, there had been a revival of internet in 3D features sparked by the availability of digital technology. Whether this will be more than a short film phenomenon remains to be seen so the trend towards 3D production has seen greater investment and industry commitment than before. Now summarize this topic. Photography is a creative process of recording pictures by means of capturing light through a camera 
on a light sensitive medium such as a sensor of film. Light patterns reflected from objects are recorded onto a sensitive medium or a storage chip. In newspaper and magazines, a photojournalist does with a photo what a reporter does with words. A good sense of aesthetic and composition are useful tool for a photojournalist. Besides using the camera, he should be computer savvy and be willing to experiment with new technology. Photographers must be well organized, practically and friendly in nature. Finally, they must have excellent communication skills and should work in an ethic, ethical framework. Cinematography is an illusion of movement by the recording and subsequent rapid projection of many still photographic pictures on a screen. Thank you.